So Humankind had a fairly significant patch update. Here are the version notes on screen. I've covered it already on the technical side, but now today I want to show you some of my favorite changes. So let's jump straight in. Without any further ado, first and foremost, the developers have tweaked some of the cultures and in particular their abilities that were less useful or basically just didn't really make a lot of sense. The one that comes to mind here is the expansionist ability. For those unfamiliar, like you can see here, you can select the expansionist ability and ransack an enemy city or outpost, I should say. You can then not only destroy that outpost, but also take it as your own. That differs from the normal ransack ability which just destroys it. With the expansionist ability you take control of it, right? Not only do you get rid of it but effectively you put your own smack down in place of it. Now this used to cost around a thousand gold even at this point in the game. They've significantly reduced its cost now it's much much cheaper. You can see here it was less than 100 gold. I think that's a great change and it's nice to see these neglected cultural affinities receive a little bit of loving. What was also nice to see receive a little bit of loving was this. The war score war resolution screen, right? Diplomatic functions in humankind are pretty good but in this patch the developers turned the their focus or at least some of their focus towards this screen and in particular to displaying war score up front so you can immediately see exactly what your war score is and exactly what theirs is at any given time but more importantly these surrender terms have been changed. It's now much easier to get a feel for just how much bargaining power you have at the surrender at, at the, the negotiation table right at the surrender negotiations but also you can see here a breakdown between individual territories within a city. So one city may have multiple territories within it. Indeed, most do end up being this way in humankind. And here you can see the exact war score required not just to take the city overall, but also to take territories within it that you may be occupying. That's very useful, particularly if you're trying to take, say, a section of a continent to complete your collection. And this is a wonderful change. There's still more work to be done there, but I do really like it. Speaking of more work to be done, the developers also tweaked some things around civics. Mainly these civics here that you can see, these really early game ones, should be easier to earn and we should see less of those rare bugs where particularly in single player and multiplayer this is more of a widespread issue I understand but in single player there was also bugs where civics just wouldn't be triggered and you just wouldn't get any throughout your gameplay. They've made some adjustments I don't think it's perfect but I've noticed it's definitely much better in this patch. Something else that they've also significantly improved in this patch that you're about to see pop up on screen here is this in slow motion, the create your religion screen. Now you can see the first tenet that polytheism versus shamanism has been changed. It used to be plus five faith per territory and plus one per population. Now it's plus five faith on the main plaza that's plus five faith per city essentially, or plus one faith on administrative center, that's plus one faith per outpost. What they've done here is they've removed the ability for faith to scale directly with population from the very beginning. And that's a good thing because if you go agrarian cultures you tended to just snowball out of control with the old shamanism where every single pop gave you a faith. Now they've adjusted it, I still think maybe in a lot of gameplays polytheism is the way to go but I think they're much closer together now, particularly if you're playing wide and expanding, so I like this change quite a lot. Next up here I want to talk to you about this, you can see it up in the top left of your screen, it's pollution. Pollution received many changes in this patch. First and foremost here at a really basic level where pollution has just started to impact my game you can see it's a lot more transparent right? You can see what level of pollution we're at. At the moment we're at level zero right up the top there. You can see down the bottom of this little overview that the next level, level one, will be reached at 25,000 pollution units I suppose is the way to describe it. But at this point in the game as you can see only 170 pollution exists exists. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit now here to much later in the game. You can see I'm still at pollution level zero but there's now 11,000 pollution total. So we're around halfway towards level one and we're now generating as a global society 490 pollution. 
This overview is very interesting now because it gives you a lot more detail around who's polluting, who has polluted the most already, but also who's going to pollute the most in future, or at least as far as we can tell, right? So the top here you can see total in the atmosphere, 11,000 pollution, and you can see in this case the Zulu are the top polluter by far. Look down into the next part of this overview, and now we get a rundown for also how much each empire is producing per turn. Here again you can see Zulu is ahead by far, but I can tell just by looking at this really quickly that actually the Babylonians are gaining on them. Right? The Babylonians have only one third the total pollution of Zulu, but they're producing over half as much per turn. Overall though, away from that uh, discussion on sort of the transparency of pollution, we've also seen adjustments to specific yields and also how we can mitigate pollution. Now across the board it now requires two and a half times as much pollution to reach pollution level one and then pollution level two to destroy the world. But not just that, we also now have really uh, much more clear and obvious ways to reduce pollution. Here you can see that wind energy and so on, and just there you notice that they provide negative pollution benefits. So now we have infrastructure and districts and so on that can reduce pollution. It's not just planting forests, although I would note that planting forests as carbon sinks is also now more effective at reducing pollution. Is pollution fixed? Mm, overall, probably not. Could we see more? climate change, environmental impact, natural disaster features in humankind, absolutely. But that's a great start and I'm really pleased with how that's starting to shape up. Here at the end of the video while you're watching me fight this AI I want to talk about really quickly some quick fire changes right at the end here that I'd like to describe or that I've heard you guys talking about in the comments. First and foremost they added coastal sieges. Basically that means you can attack from the ocean at land. <laughs> so basically uh, in a nutshell, if you'd settled a city on a small island and filled that island with units, you wouldn't be able to t have that city taken from you because in the previous version of Humankind you had to actually embark or disembark your units onto land before you could siege. Now you can siege from the sea. Other changes largely, and while you're seeing uh, this footage really relates to this quite strongly, were changes to the AI. AI is now allegedly more aggressive. Allegedly, uh, it will place districts better, particularly its unique district. It should also make better advantage of moving through friendly terrain to fight you instead of just immediately jumping at you. So it should navigate the map a little bit smarter. It should be placing its districts a bit better. This particularly goes for uh, independent tribes and non-player AIs. And finally, the AI should be better with moving its units and with positioning its units before battles. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.